Welcome back to Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I am Dan Coons. It's cold, it's gray, it's clammy, it's November. Let's talk baseball, baby. <laughs> Hot stove league. Let's get going. The Wenatchee Apple Sox are about ready to enter into a milestone season, their 20th year of baseball in the West Coast League. And here to join me for the first time ever, and I can't believe it took us this long to get these guys on the show. To my immediate left is the broadcasting voice of the Wenatchee Wild. He also handles media relations and all kinds of, probably a, you have your finger in a lot of different pies, I'm assuming. Joel Norman, the director of communications, make your title specific, and the, and the owner of the Apple Sox, now in his second year, Jose Oglesby. Did I pronounce your last That's name correctly? Very Jose. good, thank you. Welcome to the program. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Uh, first timers get the same question, a little, just a little uh, background, a little Jose 101. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself, Jose. Well, um, I, I'm a software developer by career. Uh, and about a year and a half ago, I decided that I wanted to try owning a baseball team. And so I started looking around and I found uh, Wenatchee Apple Sox and here I am. And here you are. And so far it's been a pretty good marriage. I, and so far, I've, I've, it's been great. Uh, yeah. the, 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 the people, the town, the community is supportive. Uh, I, couldn't be, I couldn't have asked for a better setup. Were you familiar with Wenatchee area in North Central Washington before you, you dove in and wrote the Just check Just from driving through on the way to various places. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're here. And now I'm here. Yeah. Joel, a little bit about yourself. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Graduated from West Virginia University in okay. May and uh, moved out a week later. Packed up all my belongings and here I am. So. How did you land this gig? Oh. You saw it on the trades or something? Or? Yeah, I applied for about 20 to 30 different broadcasting uh -huh. jobs and, you know, fortunately I heard back from the Apple Sox. I, I remember I always tell people my first day I came in, I met Jose and I was like, oh, I don't remember talking with him during the interview process. <laughs> and Ken Osborne, our GM, says, oh, this is Jose, he's the new owner of the team. My first thought was, Okay, well, do I still have a job? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do I need really? to turn around right <laughs> now? Or? <laughs> but everything's worked out great. It's been a lot of fun. Let's, uh, let's take care of some myths and misconceptions right now. It's not like you guys fold up the tent at the end of August and say, we'll see you see in June. You guys work as hard now as you do during the actual baseball season, right, Jose? If anything, we work at it harder now. Uh, this is the season where we, you know, we have to make plans. We have to put things in, in place for next year. It takes time to get those things done. Uh, we talk to sponsors, we talk to season ticket holders. Uh, it's a lot of work now. Uh, same deal for you. What have you been doing since the season ended? Yeah, sponsorship sales has been right. a big thing. We talk with our sponsors. You know, they're a huge part of our success. Without them, you know, we're not here. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why we're going into our 20th season, and it's because of them. So ensuring that those relationships are still strong and maybe establishing some new ones. That's been a lot of the work this offseason, and it's been a lot of fun so far. It should be noted that this is a stable franchise and that, you know, throughout the history of both, even before the West Coast League, there were other leagues that the Apple Sox were part of. Teams have moved, teams have folded. Not the Apple Sox, they've been here since since day one, and that uh, it, it's good to work for a stable organization, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's been, a, it's a really comforting, I and mean, just for myself, you come in and you, you look at these summer league teams, a lot of them fold across mm -hmm. time, but you know, I looked at the success of the Apple Sox, just not just on the field, but as a brand, as a franchise, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, J uh, Jim's, his real business philosophy was been real successful, you know, and then he sold the team, and we see it's going to continue now, and Ken staying along, it's just been a huge part of it, and it's exciting. It's an exciting team to work for, and you know, there's never a, a slow day at work, so to say. I know Jim Corcoran helped you out during that transition, Jose, last year. Now he's, he's gone. The training wheels are, are off the bike, so to speak. What did you learn from Jim last um, year? I think the, the most important thing that I learned from Jim was the importance of relationships. Uh, he had built you know, hundreds of relationships with, with people in town, and he was able to, you know, uh, pass them on to, to, our, to our new uh, group. So that's, that's been really gratifying. And I think all this work that he did all those years, building those roots, is really coming to fruition. So that's really been helpful. When I was looking around for a, um, for a franchise, I really wanted a place where I didn't have to develop all those things from scratch yeah. because that's, that's really a daunting task. And you so, also have Ken Osborne, who's, the, uh, who's part of the ownership group, and also he got a promotion. Yes. He's now the GM. Well, he's, he's the one that knows the most about what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> the, re the rest of us are, you know, trying to catch up with, with, with Ken. But he's a great mentor uh, on that aspect of operations and things like that. And it, it helps that he loves baseball. And I know you love baseball. That's, it's, it's, you want to have an owner who loves the sport, right? It's not just looking at the bottom line on a spreadsheet. That's right. No, I, I, I'm a baseball fan th through and through. I mean, I've been a baseball fan since I was uh, a kid. I mean, mm -hmm. really. 
Um, from Pittsburgh to West Virginia to Wenatchee, what are your impressions of our little hamlet here, Joel? Well, it's a nice little area. It's yeah. a little different, you know, I, I've been saying this since May. I mean, it's different seeing the mountains every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was definitely hilly where I live, but not to this extent, living in a valley. It's, it's a beautiful area, though. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, the cold right now, maybe not as much, yeah, but, you know, thinking about June a little bit more and more each day. But well, we earn our springs and summers here when we have to go through days absolutely. like this. The league schedule for next year is out, um, and uh, Jose, I'll ask you, how does, how does the league go about deciding who plays when and, and where? I know you have some non-league games. you got some holes to fill, but the league schedule is out. Walk us through the process. How does that work? So um, this year uh, we had our commissioner of the league, Rob Nair, uh, put together a proposal, which he then submitted to all the various teams. Uh, originally, we really wanted to have no gaps and, and have games like just about every day. Uh, but, you know, then reality sets in and you have, some teams cannot play on certain days. Some teams can, you know, have some travel restraints. Uh, and so eventually you have to like uh, go through all of that and, mm -hmm. and, and adjust the schedule for those things. And including and everybody wants to play on Friday and Saturday at home. That's Every, right. Everybody wants to have Independence Day at home, and it, it doesn't always work out that way. That's right. This year we're going to have more. Last year we only had like three weekends. Uh, I, I, I think, think it's two or so. Yeah. I, I think this year we're going to have four or five, and then I think we're also going to have one weekend where we have a, a non-league game. So. Okay. The season's still the same length, though. Everybody still plays uh, the same amount of league games. And it's we're still, the same we're still 60 games. 30, okay. Yeah, 30-30. 30, 30, 30 okay. home, 30 away. And, uh, no, we, we are excited about uh, filling in the, the non-league uh, aspect of the schedule. Um, and it should, be, it should be fun. And this probably can't be too much of a phone call. As we mentioned, 19 years in the business, you can probably call up some of these teams and they go, oh, yeah, we, we love Wenatchee. We've been to Wenatchee. We'd be more than happy to play a couple of games that don't count with you guys. Sure. Sure. Yeah. We, 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 can do, we can do that. And, yeah. And, yeah, we're definitely looking, looking, making all those calls now. And I when think, is I think, that? I think Ken's doing that. Is Ken yeah, Kyle yeah, did yeah. a little bit yeah. too. Yeah, he's yeah, made yeah. a couple of calls. I think yeah. he scheduled a couple. Of games yeah, yeah, we have yeah. In mind. yeah. yeah he, he told me this morning that he said that the schedule is almost set. Mm -hmm. We're Just almost about. there. And Just I like it when these out-of-town teams come because they never, Wenatchee never travels to take on these teams in these non-league games. They're almost always mm -hmm. at Paul yeah. Thomas Senior yeah. Field. Uh, but these are these are baseball lifers. These, these, these non-league teams that come in, these guys are just playing it just because they love baseball, mm -hmm, as yeah. opposed to collegiate guys who are playing in a wood bat lead and, and want to eventually work their mm -hmm. way up to wherever their talent and their gumption may take them. That's not necessarily the case with some of these other teams that come in. Some of the teams are in other leagues. We right. have some from the former league that we used to be in, the Pacific mm -hmm. International League. I think um, was it the Highline Bears. We played them this past yep. year at Northwest they, Honkers. Um, I mean, those then, are teams from the, there. Then we do the academies. Yeah, so. there's younger players coming mm -hmm. in too. It's you know, it's different leagues. It's nice to get these games, I know, because anytime you can add extra home games, why not? Yeah, right? oh, absolutely. <laughs> if you've got an open weekend, if you've got an open Monday or Tuesday, why not toss them in? So. Speaking of home games, um, any anything new? in the world of promotions or anything different that people can expect or is it going to be a little bit of a, what we've always used to and maybe some new stuff here and there? Well, um, one thing that I would like to do uh -huh. is um, increase the number of community events that we do. Okay. So you can look forward to seeing some community events held at, uh, you know, at our field. Uh, maybe we'll see if we can get some entertainment that's you know, different mm -hmm. from what we've done. I mean, I know, I know. You know, the thing about about the Apple Sox is over 20 years they've done everything. Really, yeah. They've had they've had concerts. I, did they? They here they had Willie Nelson. They had we had Willie Nelson came to town okay. a number of years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I heard, so. I heard before that. our time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> before before our time. But you know, I know I'm not saying we're going to get <laughs> Willie Nelson back. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, right? But, but you know, we, we'll, we'll we'll look into things like that. You mm -hmm. know, some some rev up the. The, and, the, and the reality fans. is, I mean, I'm a baseball fan, and I'll go to watch a baseball game, but they had no between any promotions. It doesn't bother me. I'm there to watch the game. But in today's day and age, it's a show. You have to put on a show for the fans. Absolutely. Well, the, the, the thing that's happening in baseball throughout, which baseball industry is very much worried about, is the attention span. Absolutely. Right? The attention spans are, are getting shorter. Uh, people don't really don't, don't want to sit through, uh, you know, I happily sat through a 17-inning game at the Old Kingdom, okay? Sure. So, <laughs> but, uh, but these days, you know, people wanted to, to, the game to move a little more. And so you've got to keep it entertained. You have to 
Keep it interesting. I'm sorry, Jose, I wasn't paying attention. What did you just say? I'm kidding. <laughs> that's, that's a joke. Uh, what's your favorite? You, 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 I know you're just in your first year. You're about ready to enter your second year. Uh, Joel, on the road, some of your favorite parks to call oh games boy. at? There was a lot of great ones there. Yeah. I really liked um, well, Victoria. We opened up the season. I mean, that just set a great tone mm -hmm. for the year. I remember I sat there, and second game of the year had the highest crowd, uh, highest attendance in any single West Coast League game in history. So that was really cool. It got me excited for the sure. start of the season. Oh, yeah. But that was a great place. I really liked um, you know, Corvallis was great because they play at Oregon State mm -hmm. Stadium. So, uh, you know, some people wonder whether or not that's fair. But hey, it's a good relationship they build sure. up over time. So and they're good. Absolutely. Yeah, they're good. Three straight championships. Yeah. So I like that one a lot, Victoria. It's probably other ones I'm thinking of. I'm excited to see some of the other ones still. You know, there's mm -hmm. some places, Ridgefield, they got a new team new this team. year. Yep. Um, no, we're not going there this year, but looking forward to next season going there. So, a couple of neat places. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Crustangle is the manager, the head coach, if you will, of the, of the Natchee Apple Sox. Season was over. I'm sure you had a, a, an end of the year meeting with Kyle, sat down. I like him. I love his enthusiasm. I love his, his love of baseball. What was your parting instructions to Kyle before winter came? You know, let's, let's build a winner. Yeah. You know, let's let's figure out what kind of players we want this year, and targeting on those things. Uh, we didn't go in depth over you know like analysis of everything. Sure. But it's just mostly a philosophy. Uh, our philosophy is you know, uh, oh my other philosophy is you know. Hey, please, Kyle, get as many local kids as we can. Sure. <laughs> and Wenatchee is a great baseball community, and you've had some great local kids right, we have. come up from, from, the, from the greater Wenatchee area to play for the Apple Sox. Yep. And that's always a challenge, especially, and you can address this, Joel, mm -hmm. earlier in the year, a lot of these kids were playing college baseball Absolutely. deep into June, and, and the, the roster is really in flux for the first couple of weeks, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I felt bad sometimes. I, didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if I was providing enough information for local media, but I was saying, boy, the roster is changing every day. We're picking mm -hmm. up guys on the road literally halfway to a city right. and then they're coming for two games and then they go back home so it is it's tough because the NCAA regionals are going on at that time and you move into the college world series guys are kind of in and out you know some can come on some can't for a little right and, well, you know Kyle had to do a great job of being able to just pluck guys from his, his school at Yakima Valley just pluck mm -hmm. them for a couple games if need be but yeah, it really didn't stabilize until probably late June. I remember we finally started having some home games in a row then, and I was like, all right, here we go. We got a stable team. Got a good feeling what it's going to be like. So. Well, I, I know I'm watching the game sometime, and I'm going like, wait, who's wait, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Wearing our jersey, so he's one of us. He's not on our roster. Who is this guy? Yeah. It's our guy. <laughs> It's not just quality baseball players, it's quality baseball people. That's what you want, Jose, right? You want Absolute, outstanding young citizens. Absolutely. I mean, this, we are trying to prepare uh, these kids for, you know, the beyond, you know, mm -hmm. what happens beyond. And I think character counts. Mm -hmm. so, and they want them to, t to, wherever they go in their life, to have fond memories of their time with the Apple Sox. Is it too early to talk about billet families? Can we throw that out there? How are we doing for billets? The, you know, the, for the, the players for a, play, a bed to stay, sleep uh, we in. We have a great, great uh, program. Uh, and, you know, we have, our host families are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. they're ready to, to go. We, I don't know, do, do we know who we are losing this year? I don't think we know if anybody is not coming back. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think we have a good, a good mm -hmm. bench of people who want to c come in. And so, you know, it's, I, yeah. I it's, think we're doing, we're doing really well with our, with our uh, host families. They mean so much to us, too. Oh, sure. We talk about what the sponsors mean, but you think about the unselfishness of these mm -hmm. host families, you know, to take up a kid who they don't know at all. I mean, I speak from experience. I, I stayed with a host family this past summer. Mm -hmm. It meant the world for someone who's going to a completely new area just to have someone say, here's some food, here's a right. bed, you know, and I know the players really appreciate it, too. Yeah. I'm excited for Apple Sox baseball. 20th anniversary special logo special jerseys that kind of cool stuff jose or we must have something in the we're, we're definitely unveiling the logo okay that's, that's for sure that we'll be coming having up. throughout throughout yeah. the season it'll be coming up uh we are definitely going to have you know some special publications and things like that and mm -hmm. and media outreach and and, mm -hmm. and things like that we, we might do you might have to do a, a history of the apple Sox special oh i love that <laughs> i love that how are they as, as new as somebody new to the league jose how do the other owners uh, bring you on board. I know it's kind of a closed group. I mean, to own a to own a baseball team in the West Coast League is is a, not an easy gig to get. <laughs> well, there 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 again, uh, Jim Corcoran. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether I should praise him or. <laughs> but I I go to this meeting and they said, well, Jim ought to do that. <laughs> Jim Jim used to do that, 
Now you're doing it, th uh -huh. this being league secretary. Sure. And I'm going, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. And, and so I'm dealing with insurance for the league no, and I'm sure. dealing with all sorts of things like that. So they're happy so far to have me, I think. And it's pure baseball. I love the wood bat. I just love yeah. that. And it, it is, there's something about the sound of a ball hitting a wood bat as opposed to an aluminum bat. That drives me just, you know, it's got to be a wood bat deal. Aluminum's cheating, I said. Yeah, <laughs> it is cheating. cheating. It is cheating, if you ask me. I just assume get rid of the whole darn thing. Absolutely. Uh, let's wrap up where we started. Schedule. The, the, as, as we mentioned before, the, the league schedule is set. They still have to fill in some holes for the non-league. Circle some important dates for us. Opening night is... June 4th. Against. That's a big one. That's going to be against... Oh, I forget already. Victoria. Victoria, Victoria. that's right. Okay. Victoria again for the fourth year in a row. That's right. Okay. We played them a lot in recent years. That's home. That's going to be great to start at home. Uh, July 3rd, fireworks night. Mm -hmm. i got to love those. I mean, that's, that's always a lot of fun. And then beyond that, I'm trying to think of some other really good ones. It's just the whole schedule really excited me. We've got yeah. a lot of weekend dates. We'll have a lot of fun promotions, we hope. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see yeah. what, what we do with those. Um, What's one that, that that's always good? Uh, yeah, I'm blanking out on that. We closed the year in Corvallis. So that could be interesting. That could if be we interesting. Are, yeah, if yeah. we're on a playoff race, that could be uh -huh. big for seeding or potentially sure. something else. Maybe a potential championship preview. We've and it, you know, it went right down to the last couple of couple of days it's last dead, year. Yeah. In fact, it was so convoluted we couldn't figure out who was going to make the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll have somebody in the league office address that uh, issue right we, there. We we are going to we're going to avoid that. Last year there was you know some confusion as to uh -huh. the, the communication of what the tie breaking procedures were and things mm -hmm. like that. This year, we're going to avoid that for sure. <laughs> That's what we want to hear. Make sure, make sure uh, can I get happen. season tickets now? Can I do it? Is it available? Are <laughs> yeah, they season tickets are still available. Okay, absolutely. Uh, yes, no, we, we definitely want everybody to come. Uh, we're also looking for new sponsors. Uh -huh. Always. Always. Great sponsor opportunities. Yeah. Um, and we'll have a couple of interesting uh, twists to throw at that. Yeah. So. And the, the improvements that they made to Paul Thomas Senior Stadium on the campus of Wenatchee Valley College, really nice. I really like No more dirt. The, yeah. the pavement, it's a beautiful facility. It's one of the best in the league. We and uh, it's a great place to watch a ball game. We'd love to work on a new scoreboard. Yeah, that, that'd be, that, would that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be next. That would be next. One thing sure. at a time. But yeah, it's a great one facility. You know, yep. We're grateful to the college working with us for that over the last few years. I mean, mm -hmm. it's been a nice partnership and we really enjoyed it. You know, it's a, I think it's one of the best views in the West Coast League. Yeah. I love my view in the press box. You can see the mountains, you see everything, especially when the sun's setting. Sure. It's just beautiful. Well, I, I, PA, I, P, I did PA work for the Apple Sox for a number of years and it was, it's a cool, it's a cool organization to work for and there's nothing better on a summer night to sit in the, sit in the ballpark and watch these kids ply their trade and say, hey, I remember when that guy played for the Apple Sox yeah. and now he's pitching for the Mariners, stuff like that. Marco so, Gonzalez. Marco Gonzalez. <laughs> uh, don't be a stranger. Come back and see me soon, all right? We will. All right. Thank you Go very much. Apple Sox. Getting ready for baseball. Can't come soon enough. Did I tell you about that pitch I invented about the slow <laughs> speed? <laughs> you did. I still you got did. Will they take a 54-year-old guy with a bad arm? Hey. You know, you get a chance. Yeah. We, you you can come and, and, and try and uh, strike out our players. <laughs> 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 Maybe that'll be oh. the next promotion. There you go. <laughs> we guarantee you I will not be a member of the Apple Sox pitching staff next year because I just, I just don't have it anymore. I just don't. <sighs> you watch you wake up in Anchee Valley in the NCAA Live Channel. We'll be right back.